Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and you're probably wondering what the heck is that grip he's using on his right hand. So today I'm going to talk about dealing with uh, particular hand problems and how to overcome them uh, in your playing in an emergency. So we're not talking about necessarily very long-term problems. That's something for a doctor to do, and I am definitely not a doctor. But I can tell you some things that I've run into in my very long career as far as certain hand problems uh, right before a gig, during a gig, after a gig uh, that I've had to deal with in an emergency situation. And one of these is changing up my grip. So lots of things can happen, like I said, in a really long career. I've been playing uh, over 50 years and I've been playing professionally for about 45 years. So I've had all kinds of things happen to my hands from bad cuts to uh, broken blood vessels, that's something I had recently, to broken, well, semi-broken fingers, I'll say semi, because I wasn't sure it was broken, but it was certainly swollen and I couldn't move it, uh, to running a nail through my hand, uh, by accident, of course, and, you know, things like that. But luckily, no long-term things. But I know a lot of you out there are dealing with long-term hand problems because uh, I've helped you uh, in my teaching over these years, I've had many, many students with all kinds of hand problems. Certain dystonias, where they have, uh, you know, muscle loss or, or loss of reaction. Uh, tremors, carpal tunnel, all kinds of tendonitis. So I've been working with students uh, to help them with these things for a long time. And I've come up with some solutions. They're not perfect solutions, but they are things that can help you, and especially uh, like this lesson talks about here, about emergencies. So recently, I was on a gig, and it was a jazz gig with some really fine players that I play with regularly here. And I was setting up my drums, and before the gig, uh, was about to start maybe in 10 minutes, and all of a sudden I got this shooting pain up my arm here, and my whole hand went numb, and I'm thinking, oh no, is this a heart attack? You know, who's going to let the dogs out? Uh, so right away, I sat down and I, I said to my buddy who was uh, standing right there, I said, uh, I think there's something wrong here. And they said, are you, you know, are you in pain? Do you have chest pain or anything like that? I said, no, but I can't feel my arm. And I don't know why. I wasn't playing. I just basically was tightening up, uh, tuning my bass drum. And it happened. So I sat down for a while. And my, Like I said, my whole hand was numb. And then it started, I just sat there for about a minute, and it got unnumb. The numbness subsided. And all of a sudden, I felt this tremendous pain in my thumb and a pressure, like my thumb was going to explode. And I looked down, and you could see from this picture, it was all swollen. So anyway, I had to play the gig because we were about to start. There was a big crowd there wasn't going to leave. And uh, luckily, I'd been teaching this kind of thing for a while. I'd, I've had other students with problems. We'll talk about that in a minute. So I changed my grip to this grip where I didn't have to use my thumb. So you can see that grip there. And that's not any kind of special grip, but it does come from my vibraphone grip, the Burton grip, which I use sometimes. Uh, it's not a muscle grip, a marimba grip, which is this, more or less. It's the first index finger, the first finger, and then you're using your other fingers under. So basically, you're just not using your thumb. So the thumb is just sitting there. And I actually practiced this a lot in uh, maybe 10 years back because I did have a student, a former student who was actually a very good player, but he came back to me because he had lost his thumb in a horrible accident. So he no longer had a thumb. And he wanted to learn how to play. So. Uh, I basically showed him how to use this grip right there. So, And after about four or five months of practicing and working on things, he was able to play again. It was a great thing and he still plays. So, uh, that is a viable alternative 
you know, worst case scenario. And you can relearn to play. Now, one of the reasons I use traditional and match grip uh, in my left hand is so if something happens here, like sometimes when you play lots and lots of traditional grip for a long time, your thumb will get sore here. That's just a normal thing of impact, okay? Uh, you, I switch constantly back and forth from matched to traditional. I always recommend that people learn both grips, and that's one of the reasons why. There's a lot of reasons why mobility around the drum set for certain things, uh, certain uh, ways that the traditional grip can take advantage of that weak left hand, and I've talked about that in many videos on this channel, if you, if you look under my hand technique playlist. But the whole idea of changing your grip up in your dominant hand because of some sort of injury is so you can keep playing in an emergency in this case. This is what we're talking about today. So we'll talk about this grip uh, for a minute. So what happens is the actual grip is gripped between these two fingers. So the middle finger and the first finger, the index finger. And then you take the stick in the balance point, which is probably almost a third of the way up the stick, and you just put it in there, and then you're going to move that with your fingers like this. Okay? Now, obviously, it's not as efficient as this, but it does work. Some people say, tell me they find it, it's actually easier to use these fingers like that. Now, the only issue with this grip is you're going to have some pain for a while between these two uh, fingers, this joint here. So the way to alleviate that is sometimes I'll tell my students who are having this issue to put two band-aids, the uh, fabric ones, here and here, and then not to squeeze tight, and also to use maybe a little bit of a thinner stick than they're used to, all right? And that helps a little bit. So maybe, you know, a 7A uh, width or diameter, I would suggest for that, okay? So you may have to switch your stick preference to do this. That way you're not stretching out this area if you have small hands. Now, if you have big hands, then that's not going to be a problem. You'll have more space in there. So then you want to do particular exercises. You can do all your stickings, you know, paradiddles, all that stuff. <laughs> So the other thing that can happen that pops up are these, uh, are, are these dystonias. With brass players, it's more like a lip dystonia where they lose their ability to play the horn. Could be a trombone, a trumpet, a French horn. That's happened to several people in the orchestra I play with over the years. And then they're pretty much their career is over. There's certain things they can do to strengthen that muscle, but uh, it's kind of like the kiss of death, unfortunately, for the playing career. Now with drumming, it does not have to be that way. So an alternative to a dystonia here is to change your grip once again. Also, you can try to do strengthening exercises with a heavier stick. You can try that, all right? A lot of times it doesn't work, but it's something if you go slowly and you try to learn how to use more fingers than the bigger muscles, Okay, depending on what kind of dystonia, where it manifests itself, could be the fingers, could be the wrist, could be the arm, all right, then, you know, you might be able to overcome that. And right now I'm working with a student uh, who has that issue, he has a dystonia, uh, just kind of developed, I've been working with him for a while and he's making progress, but it's giving him some problems, so we've decided to work on a different grip when it's really acting up, and I, I think it's going well for him. So that is an option, too. And that can happen in either hand. So sometimes, if it happens match grip, you can switch to traditional grip. And again, that's tricky to learn, but over time, you can do that. And, and then that dystonia might not manifest itself as much. The other issue I've come across are tremors. That's a tough one. They'll shake like this. In that case, a heavier stick definitely helps. It solidifies your grip. All right, a lighter stick that's like there's nothing there. So uh, with some of these students I've worked with, they've managed to improve some and sort of control that tremor where they can play. All right, not, not play maybe like they used to, but function and still enjoy 
playing. So uh, what you could do is you could get a hickory version of your maple drum set stick, which is going to be about 10 to 15 grams heavier. You can also get a longer stick and a thicker stick, and that's going to maybe be 20 grams total heavier. So if you use like a 7A, which is about 40 grams, a hickory version of a 5A that's, you know, maybe a custom stick or a little longer will get you up to 60 grams at least, and that will help with that. It'll solidify your feel. Now, things like carpal tunnel, that's a tough one, and that's when the carpal tunnel nerve here gets squeezed. A lot of people get surgery. They'll do a cut there. You'll see the scar. A lot of drummers, pianists, waiters, waitresses, uh, any uh, people work on computers, they're going to get that because it's kind of an overuse uh, thing that happens, and it's chronic. So your fingers will go numb, namely the thumb, the first finger, and this finger, all right? And in that case, this grip again will work. Now, if you have bad carpal tunnel, you need to get that taken care of or looked at at least. They'll do a nerve test where they put these needles in you and connect them to a machine <clears throat> and check the readings of the sensitivity of that. Because once that thing is swollen and it's closed up, you lose the feeling in your fingers. I've talked to some people that the surgery really helps, but then it might come back, so you really need to correct what's causing it. And normally what causes carpal tunnel is number one, overuse, so you're playing too much. Number two, a very tight grip will cause that. So people who bear down on the stick like a hammer and just use a lot of wrist like this are much more susceptible. The other thing for pianists and people who work on computers is the way they sit. So if they're sitting and their wrist is extended, hyperextended like this or like that, that's going to cause it. So you need to keep a straight kind of hand. Now there's a lot of information about this online. There's also doctors you can go see. You can go see hand specialists if you're in a big city. Most big cities have them. New York has several. Uh, so I would suggest finding a hand specialist and tell them what uh, you do. I'm sure they've probably seen the same thing before if they've been in their career for a while. And they will have seen it, most likely, and know what to recommend. Surgery is not always the way to do it. There's other ways to do it. You could take time off. You could change the way you play. That's the number one thing. Because even if you get surgery and they do it and it's fine, it's probably going to come back if you don't change the way you play. So I've managed to avoid most of all that because I play very loose and relaxed and it's all from rebound. So it's not really coming from the shoulders, not coming too much from the wrist, it's just very relaxed and bounced. You, by playing that way, you can avoid most of any kind of carpal tunnel or tendonitis issue. Uh, not guaranteed, but probably. I've not known a lot of players who play really loose who have that issue. I've taught lots and lots of rock drummers and guys who play, and gals who play really heavy, who have all kinds of tendonitis, tennis elbow, you know, uh, carpal tunnel, things like that. So you've got to change the way you play. And um, again, I have lots and lots of videos on here that will help you uh, with that loose, relaxed kind of playing. All right? So uh, back to this grip real quick before we end this, this video. Uh, one thing you can do and what I recommend doing is not just playing on a pad but raising your arm because what happens is the feel of it changes when you raise your arm. So you can do certain things like I've shown you on my videos like this. So a simple samba with three beats on the right hand. That really is effective for working on this. Any kind of multiple bounce where you're using your fingers. Okay, now if you're a jazz drummer, it's going to be really hard to play fast tempo. And what's going to happen since you're not used to playing this way, that stick's going to want to creep on you. 
So one thing I recommended to my student when they were playing, you know, without the thumb and learning it, we put a piece of tape here and a piece of tape here and sandwiched his grip between the, you know, rolls of tape. That way he couldn't move up or down. So we basically customized his stick just with regular gaffer's tape and putting like sort of barriers here and there. And it really, really helped him. Now, playing heavier, like rock style stuff. For that kind of thing, you're going to want to use more wrist and less fingers, so. Again, that will cut down on the impact that happens in your grip between these two fingers. So those are just some hints or helpful tips that I can give you that I've, I've um, discovered from working with several, you know, maybe seven or eight students over the years using this thing. Now for you classical snare drummers or, you know, any kind of concert percussion, it's going to be a lot harder. <laughs> Playing a closed roll like that is, is going to be difficult. You just got to work on it and do your buzzes. just like you do with the regular grip. All right, playing soft is gonna be tricky. Okay, and it, you know, it may not be as good, but as long as you're, you know, if it's an emergency, you wanna do, do it with an orchestra, you don't wanna lose your job. Uh, and if your friends around you in the section know about this, uh, it'll, be, it'll be fine, they can cover for you. You could maybe play different instruments, all right? You can switch around, things like that. But at some point, you're going to need to deal with it, all right? Uh, if you do have to play with a numb hand, that doesn't mean it's going to hurt. It's just going to be numb, all right? Like if you have carpal tunnel or something like that. It's very, very uncomfortable, I hear, all right, from people. But you can function to a degree doing it. You can still do it. It's just a matter of getting used to doing it. But you need to get it treated. Don't let it go untreated because it just gets worse and worse and chronic. And before long, you won't be able to play at all. You don't want to get that, to that point. All right. So I hope this helps. I've gotten lots of questions over the years about this kind of thing where people have hand problems and they want to know what I think they can do. You know, there's other things that are very serious like strokes where you lose, you know, mobility in one side of your body. I've had a few students like that over the years who are older and they've had strokes and they want to learn how to play again. That's much, much more tricky. And basically at that point you have to get, just go back to the very basics of just doing like and you, you just have to learn to play again. Okay. Uh, and again, the, the results may vary as far as that goes, and I'm, again, I'm not a doctor. So I would suggest you, for any of these problems we're talking about today, number one, step one, go see a doctor. Step two, you can try, you know, whatever the doctor says, you know, uh, if they say you need surgery, I would get a second opinion for sure, and definitely a hand specialist. But in the meantime, you can try some of these things we're talking about, and they may help, and I hope they help you. So we'll see you next time.